making 300 to 500 a month. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. I think you qualify for my program. <laughs> yeah, because once we make our payments, you know, the house payment, of course we got the bail insurance. I have my, I don't have, we don't have no car payment. Right, right. All we pay is the house payment, the mortgage insurance, the car insurance. If I got that, it got that low, it's because our car insurance was too high. And all we pay is basic stuff for the house, you know. Okay. Whatever. Okay, let me do one thing here, Ms. Rosales. I need your address so I can pull up some comps. And I'm also going to need an authorization form. All that authorization form does, it allows me to talk to your bank. And when I say bank, how much does Mr. and Ms. Rosales own or owe in their house? And the bank will give me a number, and they'll say, well, they owe $253,000. Yeah. I go, great. Ms. Rosales told me the true story. Sometimes when I call the banks, the bank will say, well, no, they owe $275,000. Oh, and now with all the payments, what we owe now is so that's why I need to know. Yeah, the $250,000 is what we owe plus whatever, like you said, the 6000 now that we owe now as a Okay. All right, so let me have your property address. Okay, it's 139. This is Arrow. That's an arrow. I've never heard of my
So that's another reason why, again, we want to have something out there. And I don't know, I know where Galt's at, but I don't know where this Herald is. I've never heard of it before. So I just went through the script, and I didn't have to get to the point where I was asking for a deed to buy the note, short sell lot, yada, yada, yada. How much equity does she have in that property, you guys? How much? You guys didn't write the numbers down? 100 at 150 roughly. Mm -hmm. So if you loan somebody 6000 and if you had to foreclose, there's probably going to be somebody to show up at the sale so we get our money out. That's a very small amount of money. And if uh, some of you are looking for you know, a decent investment, that may be something you get involved with. Again, I've got to call the bank, check out her numbers, you know, see what happens if she's got an adjustable rate mortgage. That thing goes up. You know, what's going to happen? If it's interest only, interest only, I've got to find all that also. Just the normal stuff that we do. So did you see how easy it was? All they had to do was ask questions. And she just went her own way. She felt like, I mean, it felt like we knew each other because I gave her the questions I wanted to answer. She wanted to tell her story, which I let her do. And that's how most homeowners in foreclosure are, if you get the right ones. Now, the problem with some of you is you're going to be dealing with the people that don't want to work with you. Here's what the people that don't want to work with you say. Well, I need authorization for it. Well, I'm not going to give it to you. Well, how, how much do you owe? Well, I don't think you should know that. Well, uh, how many bedrooms pass? That's none of your business. I'll tell you what. You call me back when you get in a better mood because I can't do anything for you. Wish you the best. Goodbye. See, that type of person you can't work with. Only with a person like Ms. Rosales can you work with and help. Now, she's not going to be a, a big money maker. She's not going to make none of us rich. But some of you on the line told me that you're in this to help homeowners keep their homes. Okay? So <clears throat> I know Clarice has been telling me this. I've been telling Clarice, I said, you know, you kind of scare me because <laughs> you want to help people, but you also got to worry about making a profit in the process. So some of you that are in the generous mode, you want to help that young lady out, send me an email. I don't know what I will do. I don't know if I'm interested in working on it, or not working on it, but loaning the money. I may, but I want to see my money make bigger returns. So I'm going to do the best I can to help her. So we were back to getting the need. All right, let's go back to phase three. Does anybody have any questions on that conversation with me and Ms. Rosales? You just got to do it, you guys. I mean, I don't expect... Go ahead. I'm surprised that she um, you know, opened up to you so readily, that she didn't hold back. And no. Because she has a problem, and she just, I mean, you heard her say, well, I can't borrow from friends. I can't borrow from family. I can't borrow because my credit's for something, something. She could do a hard money loan, but, man, that would just probably wipe her out. But that's how easy it is when you get the right people. All you got to do is ask the right questions. So I'm kind of glad that happened. I mean, I didn't script it, and it worked out perfect so that you guys can see, you know, what you run into. That's why I like sending the Douglas letter out. That's why I like putting signs out. I want people that are in a bad situation to call me. That way I don't have to chase them. So let's say if it was a good money deal. I was on the phone talking to you guys, making money, just simply from an ad that I ran in this in Sacramento Bee. All right, enough of that. So let's go again to phase three. Is there anybody else got any questions? No, I think Karen, like it's Karen. Okay. It's just not a question, but just amazing. Just there was a point that she was kind of upset and like just your, I don't know, like, you know, like maybe it's just, something to be learned through you, like how you calmed her down and started open up, opening up again. Yeah. It's like I would freak out if you started, you know, like the way she sounded, the way her, it's like, yeah, like what do I do? Like, <laughs> yes. Someone starts talking that way, but you were able to, to drive her in the direction you wanted. Well, see, it's just, um, it, it's influence. I mean, I, I believe, you guys, I believe. And when I leave this earth, they will say this guy loved his real estate business. People will look at me and say, you know what, he was a karate guy, but he loved his real estate business also. That's what he was known for. He developed stuff. I believe so wholeheartedly in this that I would argue with anybody that what I'm doing is for the benefit of these people that are in foreclosure. So you got to believe. And when you believe, it comes out in your words. Every one of you knows a Bible quote to help somebody in a distressed situation. This is my favorite one. There's an old Bible saying that this too shall pass. <sighs> okay, Terry, thanks for that little quote. I knew it. I heard it at church every Sunday. But, man, as I'm going through this, <laughs> you know, I lost, I lost my faith. So, okay, let me give it back to you. 
And then I tell him about Harrison. Yeah, we got a guy in Las Vegas. You guys have heard me say it before, and I'll say it again and again. Hey, 42 grand. And Harrison is still going to be living in that house. And I got to put another 19 grand in there by the 17th of this month. Use me and what I've done to help you get better. But you got to learn my story. You got to study my stuff. You got to sound just like me. I'm giving you the model. All you got to do is duplicate it, model the success, and then take it and make it better. And then give some back so that we can help everybody improve. So, yeah, I had a foreclosure, man. Wow. You know, and I know what you're going through. I know it's sleepless nights. I know you're on the couch crying. Yeah, you got four kids. Oh, that's hard. That, that, that hits my heart hard there. Four kids, whoo. Nobody wants to be homeless. Because if you got 